talk today about the role of drought in wildland fuels and in particular fire danger. And to do that, we really need to first understand wildland fuels because, of course, to have a fire in the wildlands, you need fuel to burn. And there are two major types of wildland fuels, what are called live fuels and dead fuels. Live fuels are those that have any degree of greenness to them, such as this evergreen woody plant, a uh, small uh, tree here. Uh, the deciduous type woody plant, as you see over here, grassy types, forbs that you see here. Basically, we break live fuels into the woody types, which would be, these would be examples and the herbaceous types, which these would be the examples here. Dead fuels, on the other hand, are those fuels that are already dead. It consists of dead pieces of wood on the surface. It could be dead vegetation, grasses that have died from the previous season, uh, dead leaves, and so forth and so on. It also could be the duff and litter layer underneath standing vegetation, basically fuels that are dead. For purposes of fire danger, we break them into four what are called time lag categories. First, let me talk about what are called the real fine fuels, the what are called one hour dead fuels. Uh, examples of this type of fuel would be like these dead oak leaves here, the uh, dead pine needles here. These are all, all very fine fuels, typically less than an eighth inch diameter. If we're talking about pieces of wood on the ground, we're talking about a uh, piece of uh, wood that has a diameter typically less than a quarter inch diameter. The characteristic of one hour fuels is that they respond very quickly to changing hour to hour weather conditions and so drought really does not affect them uh, that significantly. The next major size fuel going upward in diameter would be what we call 10 hour fuels and here's an example with respect to uh, round wood at least. These are about a half inch diameter and these are examples of 10 hour fuels. These take on the order of several hours to respond to changing weather conditions. And so drought still does not have that significant an effect on what are called these 10 hour fuels. We go a little bit higher in diameter and we get to what are called the 100 hour fuels. This is about a uh, one and a half inch diameter piece of wood here. This takes on the order of uh, several days to a month to fully respond to uh, changing conditions and, and drought can affect these type fuels because you have an increasing drought the fuel moisture content of this size fuel will continue to decrease with with the drought and that's particularly true of the even heavier type fuel which is these thousand hour what are called thousand hour fuels this is a five inch diameter log and it takes on the order of months for the fuel moisture in this size fuel to sort of reach a steady state with, uh, with weather. So as you have increasing drought conditions, the fuel moisture in this type of fuel will get lower and lower and lower. So you can see that drought really affects these uh, heavier size fuels. So given this background, how does drought affect fire danger? Well, let's first talk about two major types of complexes here, grassy complexes and shrubby forested complexes. For the grassy type complexes, like is common in a lot of Oklahoma, the South Central Plains, drought mainly has an effect during the growing season because during the dormant season, these grasses are already dead, so increasing amounts of drought will not affect that uh, to a significant degree. However, in the growing season, once these grasses start greening up and the drought continues, you, they will begin to decrease in their fuel moisture and ultimately can convert to one hour dead fuels by dying, and so that will increase the fuel load. So, Sort of for grassy complexes, drought mainly affects the growing season. However, for shrubby, woody, forested complexes like we have here, drought really has an impact year-round. And I think you can see why that is. In a forested complex and shrubby, there may be more of these type of fuels, obviously, as far as dead fuels than there would be in a grassy complex. But also in terms of uh, the type of woody plants that you have in a forested complex, shrubby complexes, the evergreens, for example, with an increasing drought situation, they will lose their fuel moisture and thus be more easily burnable. Likewise, deciduous woody shrubs can uh, lose their fuel moisture, ultimately drop their leaves uh, due to the drought and heat. And so that will convert to one hour fuels in the case of the deciduous shrubs. And so that will cause more fire danger as well. But having said all that, I still need to emphasize that the major uh, determinants of fire danger are the one hour, hour to hour, I should say, changes in relative humidity and wind speed, which are the two most important variables for fire danger. You could have a you know, severe drought going on, but if you have relative humidity of 90 to 100% and light wind, you still won't get a fire going. But 
for these finer fuels like the one hour dead fuels, the grasses, the 10 hour fuels, these are fuels that are typically involved in the initiation and maintenance sp spread of fires. And so that's why uh, for most situations, it's the hour to hour changes in relative humidity and run speed that uh, lead to high fire danger. I want to point you to a online system that we have called OK Fire, and this is, uh, can be used by Oklahoma fire managers and even those in sort of the nearby border state areas. It's a way of predicting based on our Mesonet weather network and an 84 hour forecast, the current and future fire danger going out three days into the future. And so that's a way you can keep tabs on, on the current state of fire danger in this part of the uh, country. It also has an updated daily drought index called Keech Byram Drought Index or KBDI, which is a useful index that we use uh, for determining and, and, and helping in the fire danger calculations that we do on the uh, fire model.